Hi, I'm Steven, Dev Advocate from Event Store. In the first half of this video, you will learn about what events are in event sourcing, its principles, and best practices. And in the second half of this video, you will learn about how events are implemented in Event Store DB, its components, and other details that you should be aware of. So without further ado, let's get right into it. In event sourcing, the definition of an event is something that represents a fact that occurred to an application in the past. Events usually represent an action, a decision, or a form of change that has happened. Events are the smallest units of data that is persistible to the event store, much like what a data cell or value is in relational database. In event sourcing, Events are generally made of two components, a short event type and the event data itself with all the details. Event type is a short name of the event. As best practice, event type should be named in a noun verb format where the noun subject is followed by a verb action in the past tense. For example, loan requested or loan approved. Here you can see how the type is made of two parts, the word loan, which forms the noun part, and the words requested or approved that form the verb part of the type. Together, the noun and the verb forms the event type. Secondly, try to name the event type with terms that are strongly aligned to the business. You should try not to name event types with words that are too technically driven. For example, it's common for beginners to name events after create, update, delete. That's commonly found in CRUD applications such as loan created, loan updated, and loan deleted. These are terms that are more aligned to developers than the business and can cause confusion in the future. So instead of loan created, try loan requested. Instead of loan updated, try loan approved. And instead of loan deleted, try loan canceled. Events named this way are better aligned to the business, more granular and less ambiguous. Event data is the details of the event represented by a custom data structure. Generally, event data is a list of key value pairs like this that contains the event fields and its values. But this can take the form of nested objects as well, if you like. When events are implemented as a class in code, they don't typically have functions, especially the kinds of functions that contain business logic. So they're often defined using structs, records, or other data structures that represent a plain old data object. Now that you have learned the basic principles of events in event sourcing, let's see how events are implemented in Event Store DB. In Event Store DB, an event generally has the following attributes. Event ID, which is a UUID. Event type, which is a string. Event data, which is a series of bytes. And metadata, which is also a series of bytes. There are other attributes that are related to events, but these are the most important ones that you should learn first. All events must have an event ID generated by the client application. Event Store DB uses this to perform checks to avoid duplicate events when the same ones are appended to the store in short bursts. You were introduced to event type and event data earlier in this video. Event type again is a string that represents the short name of the event. In Event Store DB, the event type is a simple string and cannot be empty or null. The event type should not be prefixed with the dollar sign. This is because all internal events in Event Store DB use the dollar sign as the prefix of its event types. Event data, again, contains the data structure that describes the details of the event. In Event Store DB, the event data is a byte array that generally represents a JSON object. However, this can also be any type of object or structure like XML, YAML, or even a JPEG file as long as it can be serialized into bytes. 
The maximum size of event data is 16 megabytes, but in general, a well-designed event should be much less than one kilobyte. Event metadata is a byte array similar to event data that can be used to store any additional information that can be supplemented to the event itself or other information that is useful to the developers. Usually, these are information that are less relevant to the event itself. Examples of metadata are the event version or schema, correlation ID, causation IDs, additional timestamps, and the author of the event. Events in Event Store DB are immutable, meaning once it is appended to the event store, it cannot be changed. This is very different from a relational database model where cells and rows can be updated or deleted at any time. This can mistakenly replace or remove data in the past that might be important. This concept of immutability is important in event sourcing because firstly, this allows it to retain all information and pass actions about the data, which can lead to better insight and flexibility with your data. Secondly, since events are very frequently replayed into different kinds of projections, Keeping the event stable will help the reliability and consistency of these projections. And this can enable a better development experience and performance optimizations. Event immutability will require a different way of updating the database. We will discuss this more later in a video about streams. In this video, you have learned about what an event is in event sourcing and how it is like in event store DB. You have learned that an event is something that represents a fact that occurred in the application. You then learned how an event is made up of an event type and event data. How the type should be a short name of a business operation that aligns closely with business terminologies. And how event data is the details of the events, typically modeled as plain old data objects with key value pairs. You then learned about the immutability aspect of events and why it is important for event sourcing. Finally, you explored how events are represented in Event Store DB and its various attributes such as event ID, type, data, and metadata. So this concludes the video. Hope you have learned something from this. And if you like what you've just learned, make sure you watch the other videos in this series as well. Enjoy.